we'll give it just one more minute. We had um, almost 200 RSVPs today. So I, we're still, I think a, a few minutes, uh, like we're still uh, getting a lot of people kind of coming in, uh, you know, on Miami time. So let's just give it another minute uh, before we get started. And uh, Bruce, how are you, sir? Oh, I'm doing well. My, my typical line is all things considered, all things are great. Um, <laughs> lots of changes, transitions, new ideas, new things to try out. It's very interesting and therefore exciting times. So I'm doing just fine. Thank you for asking. You know, I think it's worth mentioning that both Rosemary and, and I were part of a mastermind group that you hosted um, uh, or that you organized and that I, I promoted to this audience. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, if you don't mind taking a second while we just wait for some more folks to roll in, um, what have you learned? Um, you know, we, I, I personally loved it. You can read my, you can hear my testimonial on Bruce's website. Uh, so I've sort of said my piece, but I'm curious what you've learned um, from that experience uh, of, of creating a new business offering and pivoting your your uh, business during during COVID. Well, I could tell you a bunch of things. I mean, we can talk about technical learning, we could talk about marketing learning, and we could talk about content learning. First of all, I learned that it was both successful enough and also um, important enough to the people who participated that I've already set up two new ones. And they're both filling up because people are really looking for new ways of dealing with what's going on. And I think most importantly, the premise that we started with was the premise of people looking for certainty. The premise that we ended with was that the answer to what's going on now is relationships. It's the ability to have people you can count on, you can check with. I just saw Dave Bricker pop on. Dave Bricker is my go-to guy for technical issues. I mean, so much of this is technical. Technical is so important. Technical is not my specialty. Sure, any of us on this line can probably do it better than layman can, but still, it's not what we are best at. So knowing Dave means I can simply say, hey, Dave, I can't figure this out. Can you take a dis care of this for me? And it's become a wonderful quid pro quo. Rosemary becomes my go-to person for presentation skill in this technical environment, which means I don't have to know how to do things. I know how to get them done. And I think we've all found that out from what the group provided, because I can tell you that of the 20 people on the group, I speak to all of them on a regular basis now, and I know everybody speaks to each other. So that's one thing I learned. I don't wanna go on for too long, but let me say also I learned that all the things we did to get us to where we are that we now think have gone out the window because of what COVID has changed, in fact, have become incredibly valuable. We just have to think of them in different terms. So for example, what I learned how to do, the marketing skills, the presenting skills, you know, I was traveling around the world speaking at conferences live. So I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna do it on Zoom, it's gonna be awful. Well, the truth is it actually worked out really well on Zoom because there was a level of intimacy and a level of mm -hmm. vulnerability that the technology provided, which then allowed me to do what I had learned to do over all these years. So it's not a matter of saying, I have these skills, they've now become obsolete because of the new world. It's a matter of saying, I have these skills, how do I reposition them? to make sense for what people need right now. And that was huge learning for me. And it sent me off in a whole new direction. Instead of lamenting what I had that is now gone, I'm ex instead excited about what I can do moving forward. You know, you, Bruce, you just continue, Bruce. I mean, you're doing my presentation for me. This is formidable. <laughs> this is like the most, the most prestigious warm up act I've ever had. So please go on. You know, it's, it's funny you say that. The band that I played in, uh, we used to get hired by the county and we would open for a lot of the dinosaur bands that would play at festivals. So we opened for uh, the Jefferson at Starship. We opened for um, Charlie Daniels band. We opened for Grand Funk, all those kind of bands. And we would tell people, yeah, we opened for these bands. That was our status. But one time we opened for Bo Diddley, except Bo Diddley didn't want to go on at the time he was slotted. He wanted to go on earlier. It was a fundraiser for Janet Reno way back when. So he played first and then we played. So I get to tell people that Bo Diddley opened for us. So that's, uh, that's how this works. You know, yeah. I, you know, I spent many years doing improv and I'm going to improvise for a second here. You know, since I got you, Bruce, you want to go ahead and introduce Rosemary and then we'll kick it in. 
I would, I would love to introduce Rosemary. That's an honor. And everyone on the screen, hi, Susan, everyone on the screen will particularly appreciate it because I don't actually have the facts in front of me. So I'm not going to bore you with CVs and all of that. And if I tell you she was on Telemundo and she was on Univision or whatever, I get all that wrong. So instead it's going to be, and by the way, you can look all that stuff up. It's not that it actually matters. I believe in being truthful, not necessarily factual. So I'm not going to be factual, but I am going to be truthful. Rosemary is a powerhouse. Rosemary is one of those people who either directly or indirectly figured out what her superpower was and figured out a way to let it shine. Because what you're going to see, you're going to learn from what she says you're gonna learn from what she teaches you. You're gonna learn from the ideas, the plans, the programs that she presents. I don't even know what they are, but I know they're gonna be awesome. But what you're gonna learn more from is watching her because what you're about to see is a masterclass, not simply in presenting. Obviously she's a good presenter, that's what she does. But it's a masterclass in selling, not selling, presenting who you are and why you matter. Those of you who've taken my programs know I talk all the time about people don't buy what you do, they buy who you are. Plenty of people could get up on this screen and do a presentation on presentation skills. In fact, plenty of people on this call could do that, but none of them can get up and be Rosemary. And you're gonna see charm, you're gonna see graciousness, you're gonna see eloquence, you're gonna see beauty, you're gonna see stage skills, you're gonna see command of language, and, and by, uh, uh, verbal language and a body language, you're gonna see all of that. But what you're gonna take away is, oh my God, Rosemary is amazing. And I would, I would advise you all that your job is to figure out how do you take your skills and present them the way she's going to do? Because what you're about to watch is really a master at work. My friend, I'm honored and pleased to say that, and thank you for giving me that opportunity, Dan. My friend, Rosemary Ravenel. Woo, thank you, thank you. If I could reach out through this lens and hug you, I would consider it done. It's wonderful to see so many familiar faces and new faces. What I love about what we're gonna do for the next hour is that this is about you. This is about how you can tap into your personal power in the confines of this Brady Bunch tile. Most people still today are giving it up because you're not showing up. How many calls, and there's even some people on this webinar who are not turning on their videos, right? How many times are you talking to a blank or a black screen? Well, you know, folks, those times have to end now because the reason we're here today and the reason this is such a popular topic and the reason I created a workshop series is because virtual is here to stay. As a matter of fact, we talk about Zoom as a, as a shortcut because Zoom could be GoToMeeting, could be Skype, it could be Blue Jeans, it could be numerous, numerous different platforms. The point is that because of COVID and after COVID, we're going to be communicating remotely via this platform, whether we like it or not. So we have to get with the program because our personal power, our ability to succeed in whatever endeavor you're doing, in whatever field you're in, is going to rely heavily on your ability to be authentic, clear, compelling, okay, and effective in this space. I don't have to tell you that it also can affect your personal relationships, hence the beautiful, beautiful value of public speaking. But we're going to be talking about just a few of the items that I cover in my workshops because of time. We're going to be talking about the importance of, of getting this right. We're going to be talking about how your nonverbal communication, how facial features and expressions, how gestures can accentuate, enhance, and complement your message. We're gonna be talking about visual composition, a pretty picture, how to organize this rectangle so that it shows the best of you, okay? I'm gonna show some slides. I'm gonna stop the slide share so we can have some conversation. We're gonna play a little game called the Zoom score game where I'm gonna invite you to rate some images of people you've likely seen on cable news You've seen them, you see them every day. Many of them have very sophisticated sets. They are based in their homes. We're gonna ask you to critique some of them. And then we're gonna put somebody in the hot seat. And we're gonna invite a volunteer to come forward and to allow me very gently and lovingly to help you improve the way your video looks right now today.
Okay, so I'm going to start sharing some images. And I'm sure you've seen or you've done this before, right? The days of working in your pajamas are over. As a matter of fact, I like this image, which really defines my Zoom score concept, because even if you're sitting at home right now, you're taking away from your power by not dressing fully for the role that you want to, to hold. I have clients who do very high stakes job interviews, and I tell them, don't just wear the upper body, upper half with a jacket, suit and tie. Dress all the way down to your toes. Put on your dress socks and dress shoes. Psychologically, it makes the difference. So I'm saying you have to step up your Zoom game. First impressions. We all know about, we learned about first, and first impressions mostly in the sense of job interviews, right? Or in dating. Now, this gentleman is a very, very popular blogger, uh, and he was on, on cable, a cable news interview. You know, but poor Joe, uh, he sort of gave up his power because in the first impression you make in those first seven seconds, he didn't make a very good one, did he? Because you don't have a second chance to make a first impression. If we look at his, his image, and we're going to be analyzing images later on, doesn't it look like he has a plant coming out of his ear? Right? Doesn't it look like what, what is that thing coming out of his ear? You have to start, sort of stop and figure out that it's a ficus plant. And then he has all, all this other, you know, unidentifiable objects in the background. Oops. You might say, well, why is she trying to tell me how to use video? I've had video in my life since I was a child. I grew up in the, in the, in the native uh, generation. I grew up with a cell phone in my hand. I know how to do video. I've been doing video since I was three. Why should I learn this? You know, there's a big difference because what you're doing socially doesn't translate into what you're doing for business. I coach a number of millennials and I have to tell you, they're my worst students. They show up so, so poorly because they've taken it for granted. They do this so much that it's like getting into those comfortable slippers, but it's not a time for slippers anymore, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to really get your game going and make this space work for us. 90% of how we process information comes to our eyes. 90%, 90%. If you don't turn on your video and if you don't make this space look good, you're giving it up. You're giving up your power. Only 10% of what you may remember from what I said during this hour will be auditory, will be what I said. You remember 90% of what you saw, only 10% of what I said. And that's pretty powerful. Which of these plates is more appealing and appetizing? The one on the left or the one on the right? I think I know the answer. Clearly the one on the left. Maybe the same food. How is presented on the left surely warrants my paying a price for that restaurant to serve me or I will enjoy every morsel versus what is on the right. Presentation matters. You might say, you know, virtual meetings, they're tiring, fatigue, you know, there's just too many of them. I can't sit another, another minute in front of the webcam. But, you know, there is so much on the plus side of the equation. The upside is quite significant because there's no commuting, right? There's economies in terms of fuel consumption, resources allocated to make physical workspaces function. There's Immersive experience. I say immersive because we're looking at each other's eyes. Well, not really, but we are looking at each other's eyes. And if you spotlight my video, you're going to be seeing every, every hair on my face, every imperfection, everything about me that we would not be able to share if we were at a socially acceptable distance in person, right? So it's immersive. It's immersive because we're looking at each other all the time, right? So there's a lot more intimacy. Hence, a lot more trust that needs to be brought to our communications in this format. It's meaningful because everything that we say should be economically focused. It should be well organized. And that's another part of the work I do, which is to help people organize these meetings so they're much more meaningful and effective. We're closer collaborations because everybody who's sharing the screen with us is in a collaborative setting. And these teams are now being, being worked very, very successfully to, to make those, those uh, interactions very, very powerful and productive. 
and it makes for stronger teams, right? Because we're going through this, this whole transition into this whole new workplace. We're doing this together. And so that will forge bonds that will serve us for the long term. What do we need to do for this to work? And people always ask me, what's the checklist, right? And I will, I'll be offering you a checklist after, after the session concludes. But what are some of the basic things? And I think dogs is always a very, very appealing way to think of us as, you know, we're just sort of, you know, puppies sharing the screen, right? We're all sort of learning together in this new, new wild world. But first, it starts with turning on your video. You can't succeed unless you turn on your video. Know your equipment. You got to be up to speed on all the new features, all the functionalities, everything that comes with Zoom updates, or whether you do any platform. Every platform has its its good features and its bad features. There's some like WebEx is far superior to Zoom, but it takes a lot longer to learn and it's more enterprise focused. Learn your equipment. Learn how to work your webcam. Learn how to work your microphone. Look how to work your lights. Learn to use what you have. Mind you, I don't encourage you to go out and buy the latest and most expensive equipment. You can probably and most likely improve your image, improve your presence with what you already have in hand. It could be an iPhone. Okay. It could be, it could be whatever technology you're using right now. Get camera ready. I would never sit in front of you without at least combing my hair, putting on some lipstick and something that is presentable. I wouldn't think of it. It's just my reputation is on view every time I connect with someone on Zoom. So dress the part. Create a dedicated space. People might say, well, if I have five kids, they're running around in the background, there's too much noise, I share an apartment with someone. You can always find a corner create a screen, find an area that is yours, that you claim for the work you're doing. By the way, this is not optional. This is going to be the way we work and function and earn a living for a long time. So it's not optional. You can find creative ways of doing this. And I can show you how, but there's a lot of things you probably already have on hand that you can make work for that purpose. Set an agenda. Set an agenda. I know I skipped over, make yourself heard. Make sure you have good sound. And then set an agenda so you're using time efficiently. People's attention spans are shorter every day. As a matter of fact, I think if you look at the length of a TED Talk, which is about 15 to 18 minutes, that psychologically is the longest that someone can really pay attention to you. So think in terms of how do you make every second count and anticipate that there will be failures. The internet could go down right now. There could be a power outage. Multiple things could happen always have a backup plan. And with that, I'm going to stop here for a moment. And uh, Dan, I want to know if there's any questions based on what we've shared so far. I'm going to invite folks in the chat to put any questions that you might have. Uh, and while I do that, I'm going to just talk very briefly about an experience that I had with Rosemary uh, consulting with me. So. You can see how very strategically I have a flower right here, uh, which is, I bought fresh and is now like four months old. I have uh, a, a ring light right here with a secondary light here to avoid kind of the full face, to give me a full face uh, illustration. I strategically positioned this. You'll, you'll laugh because it says, in person so i covered it up with in person and now it just says classes and workshops but it was like so funny that like like you know i was moving so quickly with and every time i was presenting it said in person so i just took a little bit of tape rosemary it doesn't look terrible right yeah, that looks good it looks good you know? and so yeah. um uh -huh. you know i'm gonna be building a new um uh you know with a logo with has some orange in it to give a little bit of a pop but all of this was the product of two hours spent with Rosemary. You know, I love that my background is my books. You know, like our background says a lot about who we are and what we value. And I've always been a reader. And so your coaching really taught me um, how to be myself, but my best version of myself. Um, and I'm also wearing PJ bottoms. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm actually wearing shorts. <laughs> You'll be proud of me. Um, we have a wonderful question uh, from Paula uh, Selva. 
Rosemary, how do you prepare for an outage? Ah, okay. Well, I may ask uh, Dave, uh, the, the tech wizard, to jump in on this. You would have to have a backup. So you either have a, a hotspot on your phone, okay, or you have another device that you can log on. So in other words, I, I, have, um, I have Zoom on my phone. So if I were to have to drop out, I could then jump on through the Zoom app on my phone, for example. So you, you have to find redundancies really in, in ways that you either have to do with your power, with your internet. Mobile devices are usually the best backup plan that, uh, that uh, is, can, you can connect within less than a minute and resume the meeting uh, and not, not waste a lot of time. Dave, do you have any other, uh, if you want to weigh in on anything from your perspective? No, I think that's great. It's always good to have a battery backup for your computer just for those quick power blips and things like that. Doesn't cost a lot of money, but aside from that, connectivity is the big issue and it is the new missed flight. Right, thank you. You know, uh, Dave, uh, who the hell are you? Uh, so Rosemary, now I'm gonna put you on the spot. <gasps> who is Dave Bricker? Oh, Dave Bricker is a master storyteller. He is just a, 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 a master of so many different skills, you know, from web design to storytelling. He's a master sailor. He is a, uh, a highly uh, sought after speaker. And he is a mentor of mine, and he's a, a past president of the uh, Winwood uh, Miami Miami Winwood Toastmasters, and he has passed on that leadership to me and uh, and guided me, and has guided so many great speakers, uh, world renowned speakers, to the stage. So Dave is uh, is is a friend, and uh, he's particularly adept at the technology part of uh, of virtual communications. He's written a book which is called, uh, Dave, I have it right here. I can get it from virtual, virtual speaking in the- speak, uh, speak inside the box. Yes, exactly. Very, very good guide to get you started. You know, it's funny. I can't believe you, Rosemary, you asked me if my books were real. Uh, I'm not sure whether I should be offended, uh, but yeah, they're real, man. And this is Bruce's book, which is right on top of my shelf. Uh, so- Anyway, I think that's hilarious. Um, yeah, I, you know, I mean, I got to say, it's pretty cool that it looks so good that it looks like they're fake, you know, and that's because of Rosemary. Um, Bruce, we're going to... Uh, Dan, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Do you have anybody really cool for me to introduce? Because Bruce introduced Rosemary and Rosemary introduced me and I'm just feeling stuck. Here's what we'll do. You'll introduce me at the very end so that I can give my little spiel that I was going to give at the beginning because I actually prepared some remarks. All right. So, so that'll this be the deal. We'll have, you, we'll have you back at the end. <laughs> Any other questions that I should address right now? Yeah. Um, gosh, we're getting a lot coming in. Um, let me see. What kind of screen are you using? Uh, Donna Langley is asking. Sure. Well, you might say, uh, well, I like to use this screen when I present because it is clean. It has my logo and branding and you're only looking at me. I'm much, much more of a proponent of live sets of real, like, like Dan has. Uh, and that's what I encourage people to do. However, when I am teaching, I only want you to focus on me. I don't want to have any distractions. I will show you in a few slides what my real living set looks like. But I use a green screen, a physical green screen that, that is like a, um, a projector screen, rolls up from the bottom, not from the top. It's green, green. And it, is, it allows me to uh, have sharper uh, images when I choose to use a virtual background. You know, I want to ask you why it's important for all of these participants, many of whom are not doing this, to put on their videos. Oh, I just covered it. The 90% to 10%, I think, is probably the most compelling reason. Yeah, You're yeah. missing. This is a visual medium. This is not a audio call. Okay? Yeah. If you choose to do a teleconference like we did for so many years, right? And, you know, we always struggle with how do you make your presence known on a teleconference, right? You have to say something. Otherwise, they think I'm not there, right? You have to show up. We know Woody Allen's famous saying is 80% of life success is showing up. So this medium is made for visual. Now, obviously the situations where there's privacy, there's obviously, I'm talking about generalities. There's things that apply to different industries and, 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 and corporate cultures. There's obviously always exceptions. But my point to you is, if you're not showing up, you're giving your power 
up. You're, you're, you're leaving it on the table. Yeah. You know, you're not getting out of this as much is basically like you might be there, but when your screen is off, you're less likely to be paying attention and you're less likely to be present and you're more likely to multitask and you're going to miss this beautiful presentation. Right. I will also say that, you know, like Bruce is backlit right now. I mean, obviously he wasn't prepared to be, you know, Eden Barshan is backlit. You know, I would generally say that you should make a point of always, I'm sorry, uh, you should make a point of always being kind of at your prepared best, even if it's a Zoom call where you're just a participant. Find yourself a workspace where you can be front lit. I mean, for many of you, it really is just a matter of sitting on the other side of the table. But it does, you know, um, it is weird to look at people in silhouette. Uh, sorry to call you out. There you go, Eden! I love it! He just took his uh, laptop and just flipped it. And now I see his beautiful, scruffy beard. Um, you know, Renu Modi asked a really beautiful question. Um, you know, we're very proud of, of all the different uh, shades of skin that we have uh, in our audience. And she asked, what are good and bad backgrounds and colors for darker skin? Mm, mm. You have to play with it. You have to play with it. Obviously you want to have enough contrast so that not only your skin tone, but your garments are well contrasted with the background. The, the, the virtual background technology is, is based on, on, on sort of shape definition. So the camera needs to know that there's an outline there of something. Right, and then, and then put the other image behind you. So the more contrast that you have with your background, the better, right? And as well as the lighting. The lighting should be even. You might require more lighting than, than, than others. But the point is, you know, I must have tried 20 different, you know, pairings of background to garments to make sure that if I had worn black, it, I wouldn't be as, 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 I think, appealing, you know, based on the taupe background. If I wore white, I would be really washed out. So play with it. I have a, a Zoom wardrobe because I do this professionally, but if you spend a lot of time in this space, you might want to have a few pre-selected garments that will work for you no matter what. Bruce, did you have something you wanted to say? I couldn't tell, I saw your hand go up. No, I was waving at somebody who's leaving. Okay. Got it. You know, I, I want to show you just really quickly, like one of the things that Rosemary, so Rosemary recommended this O-Light but one of the other things is, you know, you still need like a counter light. So this is a professional quality O light, right? But you can see how I'm getting a lot of shadows. So she, she suggested that I have, and maybe, what do you think? Do you think one or two is better? Two. Yeah. So you can see that, you know, it's, it's not, like Rosemary was at the highest levels of Univision for years. I don't know if anybody's mentioned that yet, but like these are things that come from years of, being a broadcaster and then translating it into our home spaces. Um, all right, let's see, we have a couple other great questions. How can I get my logo to show? So uh, Rosemary's logo is on the lower right-hand corner. Sure. Um, also her biopic. Uh, yes, yeah, so what I do is um, create a PowerPoint. It's a PowerPoint slide. You can find within PowerPoint, there's all kinds of backgrounds that you can in gradient, all different colors, textures, I would say something very, very soft. And then I just put my logo on there as if it were a PowerPoint presentation. I saved it as PowerPoint, uh, you can save it as anything, and, and it's, it's a graphic format, and then just import it into your Zoom uh, virtual background collection. So just and as you have, you just, yes, just, it, it comes with the default of, yes, uh, that's just right, Dan. So it just as comes with the default of the Golden Gate Bridge and, and palm trees swaying in the background, you can upload your own. Yeah, so, so the, the way you do that is when it's where, where your video is in the bottom left, if you click the little arrow, it says choose virtual background, and then you can upload a virtual background. Now, I don't have a green screen, so you get this weirdness, right? And when you do this, it looks weird. So I don't like using a virtual background if I don't have a green screen, um, but um, I, I think it's worse than just having a nice background that you can use in settings like this. Right. Um, okay. One more or should we move on? Yeah, what, uh, how are we doing on time? Do you want me to move on? Uh, but, but you, you already said you, that there were two. Let's go to the next one, the next question. Yeah. Uh, Susan Windmiller asked, I have not, th this will be the last question for this round and then we'll have another round. 
I'm still not mastered how to look at my camera, so I'm looking at you, but then I can't follow the speaker. Like Rosemary's off center, how do I manage the guest sight line? How do I manage the sight line? Uh, I love that's, that. that's an advanced technique. <laughs> What I would say is right now I'm looking at, I have two screens. I have one that has my presentation, one that has all of you or most of you. And then I have my webcam mounted on the top edge of my monitor. On top of that, I have a little monkey face with, with two little eyes, two little beady eyes. So I'm looking at the little eyes of the webcam. I mean, as if it was a real monkey. It helps me focus my eyesight. But what I also try to do is to shift my eyes so that it doesn't look like I'm staring at the lens all the time. It's like the, you know, the raccoon in the headlights kind of look. So I move about in a more natural way as if I were really in front of you, right? You're not gonna stare at somebody's eyes all the time. So I shift my gaze around, you know, so that I'm looking, I can then get a glance at the screen, but I'm not gonna be reading the chat because I'd be really focusing, I'm taking my eye, eyes off of where I wanna be. So basically that's, that's what works for me. Generally, if you put something near your webcam that is a, a photo of your of a loved one, something that will draw your eyes to it. It'll be a lot easier for you to remember where to look. Yeah. I hope that helps. Quick question, Cheryl C Cattell asked, should you come off camera, come on camera if you're eating lunch? Never, unless you're having lunch with the other people, unless it's a lunch date. But yeah. no, do not eat. Don't chew gum. Okay, don't do other things like, you know, play with your hair or you know, check out your, your nails. This is, if this is, if this, if it's social and it's a family thing, you can do whatever you want. But I'm talking about using this format for business. Okay, but no, do not, if, if you're eating, if, if you're having a lunch break with colleagues, that's totally different. Okay, right. it doesn't, doesn't look very nice when you're, when you're eating, when you're eating, you know, this is like, I would not recommend it. Okay, should we go on? Yeah, how about drinking water? That's okay, right? Oh yeah, you have to drink water. Yeah, because I mean, already I feel dehydrated. Yeah, of course, you, you, you drink, uh, drink as much as you need to. All right, let's take a look. We already covered a little bit of this, but so we're looking at common mistakes, right? So the gentleman in the blue bathrobe is looking down. And obviously we wanna make virtual look as human as possible. Let me say it again, make virtual look as human as possible. So clearly, you wouldn't be looking down at, at someone. I mean, it's, it's not only disrespectful, but it shows that he didn't even bother to play with the camera angle, okay? This is a typical angle for a laptop, obviously, because a laptop usually is on a desktop, on a surface. You need to raise that baby up. Books, boxes, whatever you have around, if it creates a stable surface, bring it up. Low camera angle, wrong attire, eye line is off, and a terrible background. I don't want to see the air vent. I don't want to see the light fixture. Okay, I don't want to see your closet door. Okay, this is just not appealing whatsoever. I wouldn't do business with this guy. The woman on the right, however, she actually did what one of you did just a few minutes ago, took the, 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 the laptop and turned it around 180 degrees so that the front, she's facing the window and is not what I call the shadow creature. Okay, shadow creatures are not very attractive because you can't see their eyes, you can't see their faces. Clearly, it's someone who hasn't taken the time, and I have this to say this is really important. Set up your shot before you join the call. It takes just 30 seconds. Set it up, make sure your camera is, is properly set up, make sure that you are sitting comfortably, that you're framed properly, that you have the right lighting. I mean, sometimes where I sit, I have a, a lot of light coming in, natural light from outside. There'll be a ray of sunlight that suddenly beams through the window, and it'll spoil the shot. Set it up ahead of time. This gentleman is a public speaker. Uh, Dave, you probably know him. Uh, Justin, he's an he's a established public speaker, motivational speaker. This is how he was before he had his correction, right? You see him with the, you know, looking down at the camera, a lot of overhead lighting, messy background. Look at this extraordinary transformation. I'm not responsible for that one. Uh, but it's just, I think for me, such a dramatic before and after. Look how he is not only in this powerful, authoritative, masterful place, the way he's dressed and the way his body is, uh, is, is positioned, but look at all the, all the accessories, how he has really brought powerful elements to complement his message, using the screen as instead of sharing the screen for PowerPoint, using things like diplomas and, and uh, motivational sayings up above the bookshelf, 
books that are that are strategically positioned to ta- to say to say something about what he stands for. All of these things speak to who you are. It's a beautifully composed image. Now we're talking about what how it looks. Obviously, what he says and how he interacts is something totally different, which is for another workshop. Now you can create a powerful presence with your body just with what shows in the upper part of your body. Look at the hands, look at what Tim Cook does. He likes to do this, this steeple, this prayer thing often. And it, is, it, is, it means certain things. It means uh, acknowledgement, it means gratitude. It also is a rather weak position for someone as a statue. Okay, I mean the, the top guy at Apple. So it is not, I mean, but he likes to do this a lot. It's sort of acquiescence. So it says something, but you can do this within the limitations of your, of your shot. Arnold Schwarzenegger is like, he wants to be the master of the universe. He wants to be the Atlas. He's holding the world in his hands, hmm? big hands. Mm-hmm. And he's showing them close to the camera to ge- accentuate his masterful, powerful, all, you know, Atlas kind of look. Now there's Tim again, looking, doing the, 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 the thinker pose, you know, is he bored? Is he really just, paying attention because he's so enthralled by what's happening? Is he just doesn't know what to do with his hands? It can, it can work against you, but it's also something you can do in this box. And then this gentleman is, uh, is the, the head of Cisco. His name is Chuck Robbins. And he's doing something called basically the, the box gesture, where he's actually framing, emphasizing his statement by using his hands to sort of say, you know, this is, I, I stand by what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. So it's another powerful gesture you can use. Facial expressions, there's hundreds of thousands of facial expressions, everything from the voluntary to the involuntary, everything from the raised eyebrow to the wrinkled nose to the twitching eye, all of these things say something about you. The voluntary ones are the ones you can, can, you can control, the ones that you can command to your purpose. The involuntary ones, you need to be aware of them because everything we do in this box, again, is magnified. That's why we call it immersive and intimate. Okay, so the eye contact is probably the most important of these. The smile is always something that you can use, you know, to, 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 to bring people closer to you. It's a magnet. And uh, either the attending face, the attending face means that you're paying attention, right? That you are acknowledging, you're honoring what I'm saying by paying attention to me. And then, of course, the appropriate attire and good grooming. Good grooming is, is very important. And by, by that, I mean, even just gentlemen could use a little powder or blotting of the, of, the, of the oil on your face. With the lights, it shines. So we know that makeup is used by men on television all the time. It's a necessary part of the trade. Think about that when you're doing your Zooms. The ear pull. We may not be aware when a lot of women also play with, with our, we play with our hair. If I had hair, I might want to be twirling it if I'm nervous. Uh, n- touching the nose, scratching the nose, you know, touching your face, rubbing your eyes. All these things say something about your state of mind that can affect your ability to communicate. And conversely, your ability to be a team player and to be part of a winning team that's, that's cohesive. Now, this is where I wanted to show you was behind my screen. So the question was asked, green screen or living set? So on the top right is what my room looks like. And those who of you have done uh, webinars with me have seen this already. I have curated it to say something about who I am. I've curated it with living things, the plant, with flowers. You might have seen already noticed a lot of sunflowers on, on cable news interviews. I didn't start that. I started this like in February. Uh, but people are using the sunflowers, a very pretty, colorful, uh, large b- blossom. So it's a, it's a nice, pl- a nice flower to use. Uh, things that are textured, things that are organic, things that are... Someone has a microphone on? Yeah, I'll turn it off. Yeah. And so things that are textured, things that are tactile. But then if I were to use the White House behind me, obviously that's sort of fake, right? That doesn't really look credible unless it's something that I'm doing that relates to the White House. So the top, the top living set, I think is far more credible. Now the gentleman on the left is doing, he's doing a basketball thing. So clearly he's benefiting from the, all of the props, accessories that create a stage, they use stagecraft to tell his story. 
Oops. Okay. So can I interrupt you for a sec? Sure. This is actually a question I wanted to ask in the point of personal curiosity. So could you go back one? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for what it's worth, the upper right, right, is your actual background of your home. Right. And I've always adored it. I, I love the colorfulness of it and the fresh flowers and so perfectly composed. And there's Bruce's book. And yet today you're using a very muted color background with a bright red outfit. And I'm just curious, obviously, I know everything you do is so considered. Um, and I'm curious about the decision to, or, or the thinking behind not using your natural background for this presentation. Yes, it's cluttered. There's a lot to look at. I don't want your eyes wandering off on what's in my bookshelf. I don't want you looking at my, at the embroidered pillows. I want you looking at me. So it's purposeful. It's purposeful. If, if, if this was a different kind of meeting, I would go to my living set. And I have to tell you, sometimes I also use this, uh, this setting with the green screen to then do overlays, to have something pop into my screen. That comes, that's a feature of my webcam. So I can't really do that as well with, uh, with the natural background. So it's a choice. It's not, it's not, you know, if you're doing something that's branded, like with your biz hack background, for example, that's clearly an opportunity to, to underscore your brand. Okay. But that, that's really only achievable if you use a, 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 a green screen as a background. So there's no, there's no, there's no formula. It's what works for you. But my point is make it count, make it represent you properly. The 90% is visual. What information are you taking away from my natural background? That I love color, that I love uh, handmade things, that I love plants, that I, I have a number of artisanal things, artistic things, handmade things, right? That I love flowers, that I have a good sense of composition. So those are the, the, the nonverbal cues that you're receiving from the way I've composed that shot. Does that, does that answer the question? Dan? It does. And out of curiosity, since you have a couple options available, so you have mine right now, which is a natural background, which obviously looks good, but maybe isn't right for this setting. And then you have Lilia's, who's a virtual background that's branded and it mm -hmm. promotes the series. For this setting, for me, for us, which would you recommend? Should Lily and I be matched? What do you think? I think you should be matched. You should be matched. I already complimented her on her ochre sweater which works within that background. She picked that dominant color from the background, but because of the way the background frames her, it just comes over to her shoulders. She just, it's just a lovely, she has a beautifully composed shot. I think it just really, really works. Uh, it's very, very flattering. Perfect. But if you, if you appear together, I would encourage you to have the same background. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Gonna move on to composition. Now, this is something that anyone who's taken any photography class will know. Good composition. You know it sort of without knowing it. With, maybe even you haven't studied it, but you know when you take a shot. When you see someone's Instagram, you know when the shot is properly composed, right? Now, there's a lot to it that you may not realize. It has to do with rule of, rule of thirds and golden ratio and all these things that are very, very much based on, on, on ancient laws of... Uh, of, of, of composition balance and, uh, and harmony. Uh, but rule of third says the eyes should be in the top third. So if you see this gentleman's eyes are in the top, the line that's up on top, the first line, okay, of three lines. So if you comp compose your shot that way, you will be well framed and you will be looking, and you will come across appealing to the people at the other end. Okay, so basic composition, as you would see from a portrait studio. So composition, balance, Depth of field, many of you can achieve that with your, with your type of webcam where you have a lot of things in the background and you have a sense of other rooms and other, other sort of a real place where people inhabit. Actually, I'm going to show you some examples of that in a moment. And focus, make sure you're focused and that the exposure is correct. If you're not too dark, you're not too bright. Okay. This is, uh, and you're going to see Bob Bone is a good friend of many of us. Uh, you know, what are the environmental cues that, that speak to who you are. Bob clearly is a musician. He is a folk, uh, a, a folk uh, troubadour. Uh, he is a performer. He is a guitarist, and he does concerts all over South Florida. 
And so this is work I did with him where he's now, he, he's telling you what he does. He's telling you what his passion is. Similarly, Jose Andres, Chef Jose Andres, with his passion and love of feeding people in need, he, it couldn't be a bigger paella dish, right? It is just, it's just as big as that man's heart, right? So there's a clear sense of what does this man do for a living, right? He feeds people who need to eat good food, who are in crisis, right? He's a true humanitarian. The five senses, we're working with two, sight and sound. But what about the other three? How can we insinuate them into our shot? Well, I use sunflowers and I use an, uh, a living plant. Flowers can, can, can remind us, even though it's subliminal, of the smell of a rose. The oranges, how does an orange, fresh cut, a fresh, let me try it again, fresh cut orange taste? It tastes, as we all know, it tastes, right? So all these things can be reminders, can just be cues, even though we can't enjoy those things in our natural setting, in our virtual setting, they come from our natural setting. And similarly, things that are textured, texture can remind us of touch, okay? So don't underestimate that we can bring these elements in that, that you already see them in film, you see them in photography, they are already in use, but they're at your disposal if you know how to use them. Success beyond what we're talking about here has other things, and this is what I cover in my workshops, but this, this is just a tasting, and I wanna get to our exercise. Think about presence and body language. That there's a lot to know there. Vocal tone, energy, right? All these things that, are, that come from our voice. Any of the public speakers on this, on this call would, would tell you that's extremely important to use our instrument properly. Stage fright and anxiety. People do get nervous about being leading or speaking on a Zoom call. We do. It's natural. So how do you overcome that? The color psychology, what does what Lily is wearing, that ochre color, what does red say about us? This color psychology to understand and exploit. How to organize a meeting, how to organize an agenda so that it's efficient and people stay connected and that there's a positive outcome or desired outcome. And then how do we deal with the inevitable Zoom fatigue and burnout of, that comes from being in front of the camera and looking at a screen for so many hours at a time, okay? So with that, I'm going to get into a little bit of our Zoom score exercises, and I'm going to actually start off by telling you that even the tech titans, even the masters of the tech universe, don't always get it right. Case in point, these four were giving congressional testimony about July of this year, right? About whether the internet should be, and, and social media should be regulated further, right? So there was a lot at stake here. Zuckerberg showed up as if he was some kind of a hostage. You know, there was absolutely nothing in his background that spoke to anything about who he is, what his company stands for. It's just like, he was like in a barn somewhere. It was absolutely no, no humanity to it. And he himself always looked so robotic. It didn't really favor him. He got a lot of flack on, online. Bezos was a little bit better, although his set is very sterile. I and mean, he had that yellow filter that I don't understand how people who can afford like the best of the best of the best to help them with this, you couldn't get it right. Uh, Pishai, Sundar Pishai, you know, uh, sort of got it a little better. You know, he got it a little better. He's got a little texture going on in the background. You know, he's got some natural things on his desk. He's got some really weird looking plastic plant over to his right. Not the best. But then here we are, Tim Cook again, doing his steeple prayer pose with some plants that looked like they were just plucked from the front, you know, entrance of, of the Apple building like last minute improvised, not their best, right? They all got flagged for it online afterwards. But anyway, so we know that even the best don't always get it right. So with that, I'm going to invite you to do a game with me. We're gonna do a poll. I'm gonna do a poll of six images that I'm gonna show you taken from, from the air, from, from, from news programs. There's sometimes, there's some people you will recognize and some people that you won't, but they all have a message for you. So if you'll indulge me, there's 10 different, 10 different things on, on the checklist. Sharpness of image, composition. These are gonna be repeated later. Proper lighting, framing, the eye level, background choice, background styling, that, uh, distance from the camera, somebody too close or somebody too far away, attire and wardrobe and personal appearance. So those are the 10 elements of the Zoom score checklist. With that, we're going to actually ask you to rate 
this video. And yeah, here we go. Here we have a, a, a poll. So on a scale of one to 10, what kind of Zoom score would you give Matthew? Sharpness, composition, framing, lighting, eye level, background, styling, distance, wardrobe, and appearance. Just quickly. And let's see what you, what you think. Okay. Give it a few more seconds. Guys, make sure that you vote on the screen that it's, um, that it's showing up. And Lilia, I think I'm the one who's gonna end the poll. So we'll give it five more seconds. Five, four, three, two. Only 45 of you have done it. You're probably not paying attention if you haven't yet. Give it another second or two. Okay. So it seems like a tie between four and five, right? Clearly not the best, clearly not the best. And let me tell you why. I would give uh, Matthew a two because first of all, he didn't take the time to figure out what's behind him. Now he has a kitchen and that's fine. I mean, that's clearly his, his, his home, but like, did he have to show us like there's things on the counter that we can't identify there's nothing attractive about it. He didn't bother to put a plant there. He's got his angle of the cameras all wrong. He, he's already a round faced man, but he looks even rounder. His microphone looks like some kind of like probe. It looks very, very ominous. Uh, he's got a screen there and then some white pillows. I mean, it's, it's clearly, he's, uh, he's a very, very respected demographer, but clearly it was not his best showing, right? So did, did his, does it take away from his authority? Would we believe him more if he had a better composed video? I think we would. Let's go to the next one. Hey, as a round-faced man, I took offense to that. <laughs> but he had he has a wide he had a wide angle I mean wide angle lens, so his face looked even bigger than it, than it than it really is. Dan, I love you. Come on, Julissa Julissa Arce. She is an author, a Latin ex leader. How would you rate her video? Can we launch the next poll, please. Yep, it's launched. Uh, okay, everybody, we know the score. So do, get your votes in. They're pouring in. 40 of you have voted. Let's see if we can get up f above 50 this time. We'll give it another five seconds. Five, four. Come on, let's get over 50, guys. Three, two. Oh, my God, we're at 47, 48, 49. Come on, one. All right, 49 of you answered. <laughs> okay, okay. And Somebody the, vote twice. This is America. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dalit stuffing. The winning number is eight. All right, so eight. I would give her a nine, and I'll tell you why. But yeah, yeah, she, she's clearly in, in the top uh, scorer uh, level. She is dressed in the soft pastel pink which goes with her flowers, which has a natural element. You can almost smell the flowers. She may not have a lot, a lot of room in her house. So she picked this corner of a bookcase. She put a draped uh, ivy plant coming gently behind her, but it doesn't look like it's coming out of her ear. Her titles are all very carefully positioned so that it sort of speaks to her passion. Okay. And that looks like there's some kind of, of, uh, of, of a framed print, but it, it's, it doesn't, sometimes things are like, What's the mystery item behind there? What, what is that thing that she has? We don't see enough of it to really command our curiosity. So it's not distracting. We see her well-framed, we see her well-lit, and she's well-groomed. So I think this is someone who clearly is showing up as a leader. Okay? Next, another Latinx leader, very, very respected, established, Hispanic journalist. She's better known for her work on NPR, Maria Nojosa. How would you rate her room? I know Maria from my days as the news director at WLRN and, and at NPR. She's fabulous. Yeah, she, she is. All right, five, four. Come on guys, three. We get above 50? No, two, we're at 45, come on. One, I think some of you are not paying attention. 
Okay. Well, it seems like it's a four. Okay. I think that's fair. Let me tell you what could work better for Maria. She is, and, and it, it doesn't have to do with the fact that this is soft focus because some, I take a lot of these with my iPhone from air, so it may not be the sharpest image, but she is it, it, a nice color, but the, the camera angle is too low. Okay. Why do we know that? Because if you see here, we see the uh, uh, sort of rough edge of the, of the paint job. You see the, the, here the edge and the ceiling and the, and the lilac wall, right? So it's not, it's not particularly flattering. I don't want to see her corner and, oops, am I, am I drawing? No, I, I think that's, that's uh, someone in the crowd. Okay. Not... All right. The, look at the, uh, the, uh, the uh, artwork to her right, to your left on the screen. Does, does that seem, did, is, is that something that you think is, is, is comfortable? Are you comfortable with that? Is, to me, look, look, for the sake of time, it looks erotic to me. It looks erotic. So it's like, what are, these, what are these two figures doing? What does it mean? So it's like suddenly my eyes are going right to it, not only because of the image not being mysterious to me, saying, what, is, what does that mean? What are they doing? What, is this, what am I supposed to take away from that? But it's also very bright. So it really draws my eye immediately. Okay, so she missed an opportunity with that. Diego Poggi, he's a TV host from Argentina. How would you rate Diego's video? One. Ooh. And while we're doing that. Um, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Do you know how, I've always wondered why participants are able to draw on the screen and how to get rid of it. Yeah, I know, that's very odd because I'm only I'm supposed to do that. I know. You know, maybe Lilia, we could look into that. Uh, it's happened a couple times. I don't think it's intentional, thankfully. Yeah, uh, uh, that, that is odd because it's the uh, annotation. You probably have an enabled annotations. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take care everybody. of everybody. Right. I, I thought maybe your, 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 your kid was <laughs> doing something exactly. with one of my grandchildren with a, with a pencil. Anyway, Diego, Diego, honestly, is like a perfect 10. Not only is he, is he super handsome, but look at how he has organized his image. He has depth of field. He has gives you a sense of what's beyond the walls of his, his room, right? He uses plants beautifully in a nice splash of green, and they look like they're really natural. He's giving you a sense of, of, of height because the stairs go somewhere. He has a little touch of artwork, but which talks about something about technology, right? Uh, about a conference, and he is well-dressed for his role. He's got a nice, you know, it's, it's, it's denim, but he's well-dressed. He's beautifully groomed. He's beautifully lit. And he is perfectly centered on the screen. So you can see he's, his eye line, of, uh, eye line is right perfectly in that top third uh, of the, of the, uh, of the uh, trio of, of sections. So he's a beautiful, perfect 10. How would you rate Dr. Jackson? You know, as a round-faced, ugly man, I'm just starting to feel really bad about myself. <laughs> oh, Dad. No, well, he's not. He's, he's, not, he's not that round-faced. He just, he just has a really bad camera angle. How do I look right now? <laughs> I love you anyway, Dan. <laughs> Tell that to my wife. Okay, we just have a few minutes. I don't want to go over time. No, so we may, not, we, may not have, we may not have time for the hot seat. But anyway, Randy, Ronnie Jackson looks terrible. Why does he look terrible? Not only because the camera angle is off. It's actually too high. But, but look at that room. What is he? What is he? In a, in a, this is not a virtual background. This is like, what, did, did his wife divorce him and took all the furniture? What, is he moving in? I mean, could he have put something on that couch that doesn't look like somebody just slept on it? Right? Could he have maybe gone closer to the wall and used the wall as a background instead? I mean, it's just, it's like one of the ugliest backgrounds you could ever imagine. I mean, this guy is running for office, okay, in the state of Texas. He's running for office. So, excuse me. I mean, you couldn't do any better. I mean, this is really shabby. So I would give him like a one. Okay. Nope. And, hmm? So we're, yes. not in, we're not in broadcast and we don't have to honor the end time because I know we had a little bit of fun in the beginning. So uh, I'd like to do the hot seat. Can I announce the name? Sure. I have one more image and then we'll do the hot seat or do you want to just jump to the hot seat? Can we jump to the hot seat? 
Sure, let's go. All right, let's okay. do this. All right, drum roll, please. And the and the, and it goes to Florencia Jimenez Marcos. You're killing me. I didn't even put in my name for the hot seat, Dan. It doesn't matter. Okay, can we spotlight her video? And then I'd like people to contribute because Florencia. So this is virtual, okay? It is virtual, and I was not meant to be on um, on camera today. I was driving, so this is what I've got. Okay, good, good. Okay, so I'm seeing some things I can point out immediately. Oh, are you going to do the poll? No, no, I was. Oh, gonna... Okay. Yeah. Let's let's just stop stop the poll. Um, well, the hot seat. Okay, I'm going to give you the hot seat. So, I like I, I love what you're wearing. The necklace is maybe a little bit too busy, and it's really that was the first thing I saw when when I spotlighted your video. So maybe it's drawing too much attention. Secondly, you would need to remember what I talked about composition. You need to okay. sit up a little higher. Okay. Sit up a little higher so that there's less air, less space up here. Okay. Okay. Then the resolution is pretty good if you don't move too much. You know the the the. Uh, the virtual background is working, except that you used an image that has a watermark. Right. And I so don't I'm, have that one. Um, that's why I was just driving and I just grabbed one from my phone. It's not the one I normally use. Okay, so the watermark is sort of a giveaway. Right. Okay. Turn on when you said turn on the camera, but uh, I normally use real photos. Okay. Do you, uh, and do you have, is this a place that resembles where you normally would work? No, literally, I, this, was, this is not something that I would normally use. Okay. Well, since it is a virtual background that is probably for sale, and you can, you can download from, from, from a site, it is, it is pretty good. It's pretty good. It's, it's, it's nicely composed. It has enough greenery. Uh, but it's, it's, it's dead. It's, there's, no, there's very little life in it. There's no papers sure. on the desk, right? It, it, looks a little, uh, it looks a little wooden and... Um, artificial to me but right it is not what i would normally use right generally not bad anybody else want to comment well, i would I give you i would give you a five i think florencia <laughs> is beautiful and i love the red frames of her glasses okay and it's and it's interesting rosemary that you talked about your zoom wardrobe i normally use um something very similar to what you have i have a red and a purple that depending on the background and the situation i would use good Good, good. That's terrific. Uh, uh, you, you mentioned glasses. No one has asked about that, and that's a common question. And I, again, I, I would, would uh, ask Dave and, and Bruce and anyone else who, who, who does a lot of public speaking in this space to, to weigh in, but there really is no, there are no glare, non-glare glasses, in other words. Glasses will always reflect. It's how you like them. So you want your light to be from above, so that, and yours, yours aren't, are not, they're, they're not, there's no glare, but like for mine, for example, you know, I, I would need to just sort of light, light from further up because otherwise you're gonna get glare. And that's inevitable. And for, uh, for those of us who need glasses uh, just to be able to function or to read, I think it's important for you to take that into consideration. Sometimes people use, uh, have the ring lights and then you'll see the round ring uh, reflected in the glasses, that's, that's distracting. That is distracting. Again, there is no, there's no right or wrong. I just want to stress it's what works for you and enhances who you are, what you want to say, what you want to achieve. So you might say, well, no, it, it, this doesn't apply to me. Pick what works, but come out here as your best. You're giving up a tremendous opportunity if you don't. Dan, any other questions? Thank you, Florencia, for, for being in the hot seat. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you, Florencia, for, for being here and for being a um, BizHap um, season pass holder. And uh, Rosemary, does she get anything as a thank you for being on the hot seat? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I am going to share screen again because I want to show you that I have a, a boot camp. It's actually more of a mini Zoom camp, not a boot camp, mini Zoom camp that's next week. So I invite you for here to be my guest on this, uh, at this, on this occasion, hope we can make it. It's next Wednesday at 4 p.m., 90 minutes. And we're gonna Excellent. take a real, real deep dive into these topics. 
So my gift to you is to give you a place as my guest to come to the October 14th. And I hope you'll be able to uh, fit that into your schedule. And all of you, you're gonna be getting this information afterwards. There are three dates for the remaining part of the year, October, November, December, 90 minutes, very interactive, but it covers a lot of the things that we didn't get have time to talk about today. Perfect. Um, I have two quick questions I wanted to share. Um, yay, Floor. Uh, let me unpin you. Um, let me see how to do that. Uh, I'll, I'll figure it out in a sec, or maybe, um, Lilia, you could do that while I read the questions that we had. So um, one of the questions was from Amy Palma. Uh, her question was, how do you compare showing your personal space, not perfect, but cute and shows who I am versus a background? I like seeing people's real life house better. Fine, fine. We, we, we covered that already. If it works for you, if it works for you. But if you have a messy background and you have a something that doesn't speak that doesn't suit you i mean it's like it's like the basics right so you're inviting someone to your house right what's the first impression you want to make when they when you open the door and say welcome hopefully we'll be able to have lots of guests in our homes sometime next year but you say welcome what do you want them to see what do you want them to smell what do you want how you want them to feel welcome you want to extend your hospitality you want to extend the best of who you are and what you have to give it's the same psychology Yep. Susan Windmiller asked, I have a wall mounted TV behind me. Should I get a movable screen or cover it? Put it on, put something on it. Hmm. Make it work for you. So you recommend be, Fox it, News? <laughs> not broadcast. You can, you can, you can actually do the HDMI and put your own feed in, you know, have your own image. Oh, I see. Like a, like a static image. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like that gentleman, the public speaker, I told you that showed you Justin who had, you did the before and after and you saw his logo and the title of his speech on his monitor. You can do that too. Or you can go to any one of these, uh, I'm sure that your cable system has these uh, sort of mood kind of uh, videos, sort of looped images that are pretty, you know, natural landscape, natural things, landscapes, pretty places, that kind of thing. But make it work for you. Don't just have this black, blob there and not doing anything for you. Perfect. And um, by the way, a couple people asked about how to get a nice virtual background design one. Uh, Canva.com is a great option mm -hmm. for that, guys. Um, you can also hire, as Dave Bricker mentioned, a, um, a uh, graphic des designer to design one for you. And, and I would say that if you're, if you're someone who's doing this professionally, you certainly might consider that, uh, but you don't need to. Canva.com is a great solution for kind of at-home graphic design. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Dave Bricker. Dave, go ahead and talk about Toastmasters, and then you can talk about me, my own favorite topic. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like everybody to know that Rosemary is the president of Miami Winwood Toastmasters. And if you're unfamiliar with Toastmasters, I believe it has over 270,000 members around the world. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful organization that is dedicated to the art of public speaking, presentation skills. The chapter is all virtual, meets every Wednesday night at seven o'clock. And it's a fun community of people. So whether you're just beginning and you're nervous about speaking or you're a seasoned speaker and you want to polish your skills, try new material. It's a great crowd. It's every Wednesday night at seven o'clock. And the address, which I'll put in the chat, is wintoast.com, W-Y-N toast.com, every Wednesday at seven o'clock. Excellent. All right, now say something nice about me. Dan is my friend. <laughs> Perfect. Was, actually, I am a graduate of Dan's BizHack program. Me too. Me too. As is Rosemary. And he, Dan runs a wonderful school, has a wonderful course, which I understand has also gone virtual. Haven't experienced that. I'm, I'm one of the old guard from in-person class days. But it's a very informative and powerful class on how to use social media to market yourself. And I joined up because the revenue that was produced by the people taking the class during the class blew me away. You get a small group of people sometimes generating over $100,000 in revenue during the 12-week class. Very few people produce those kinds of results. So check out 
bizhack.com. Thank you, Dave. And uh, our next five-week program starts November 2nd. We're actually going to be holding an info session about the, the, the program and the scholarships that we're offering to minority and women-owned businesses at, five, at 12 uh, noon, I should say, this Friday. Uh, I wanted to thank our partner, Miami Marketers, for helping bring a lot of you here today. Next week, we're going to be talking about mobile marketing in Latin America. We have our graduation party for our current five-week accelerated course cohort. And then I'm going to be presenting my signature presentation, uh, backed by popular demand, on the five pillars of digital campaigns. After that, we're going to have a holiday marketing roundtable. Can anybody hear me? The seven keys to exponential marketing, free tools to find your ideal customer, our next graduation party, and then a networking for business growth in January. We're already programming into February. If you wanted to sign up in one pass for all of these amazing sessions in 2020. All you have to do is go to bhlivesesonpass.eventbrite.com and you can get a, a, a free set of reminders, a calendar invite, and a follow-up email with a recording for all of our upcoming sessions. Rosemary, I'm so grateful to you for today's beautiful presentation. You've come such an incredibly long way, trademarking the idea of Zoom score. Um, I'm very proud uh, of everything you've done, and um, I, I really uh, thank you so much. So That's thanks good. to you, thanks to everybody for sticking around with us. And congrats, Floor. Enjoy. Thank you. Be well, everybody. Bye, everybody.